We spent the last video talking about and demonstrating how to use memory and pointer scanning techniques with Cheat Engine and a debugger to search for and find interesting data in memory. Specifically, we found static pointers which could be dereferenced to find dynamic pointers for our player resources and the reveal map and no fog control bytes. Basically, we found a way to give ourselves infinite resources and to enable map hacks just by modifying a few bytes in the game's active memory. If you haven't seen that video yet, go and take a look now, because in this video, we are going to take the next step and implement some of those manual processes to improve the quality and functionality of our work in progress game trainer for the old school Age of Empires game. Last time we got our hands dirty writing the trainer, some people weren't happy with us using the Windows function of read process memory and write process memory. These functions still work and are effective at solving our problem, but let's use another approach and put together some new memory functions which don't make use of the read process memory and write process memory Windows APIs. We can start with our protected read function which we can use to both read and write bytes depending on the function arguments. While the majority of our functions have no error checking at all, let's at least first use virtual protect here to update the memory protection for the area we are interested in to make sure that we can read and write to it. We can then use memcopy to write into the destination the data at the source for a total length of n bytes. Once the memcopy has been completed, we will update the region's memory protection back to how it was at the start before we started messing with it, just in case this causes problems later down the line during program execution. With this generic ish function in place, we can then create functions to read bytes from an address into a source and a similar but opposite function to write bytes from an address to a source. Basically, Read bytes is our swap in function for read process memory, and write bytes is our swap in function for write process memory. But at the end of the day, the actual result is the same. We can use either variant of these functions to read and write memory from within the game process. I look forward to the complaints in the comment section below about still using the Windows Virtual Protect function here. If there is a non Windows API way, of performing Virtual Protect 2, let me know and we can implement it for next time. With the memory functions out of the way, if we jump back over to our binary patch code, we can change out the function calls to make use of our new read bytes and write bytes functions. If you want to know more details about how this part of the trainer works, make sure to check out the Hacking a Game with DLL Injection video in the Game Hacking 101 playlist. With those small updates done, we can now start working on the new pointer hacking functionality too. Let's first define a toggle so we can toggle the hack status on and off and also a resource boost. So we can specify by how much we should be increasing our resources each time we trigger this part of the hack. Next we define some structures based on how we know the memory regions we are interested in are set out. We know the map memory region contains the reveal map followed by the no fog boolean. We also know that the resources memory region contains food, then wood, then gold, and lastly stone. We will also create a structure to define what our memory pointer types will look like. As we saw with Cheat Engine, every static memory pointer has a base address, as well as a number of offsets, which need to be dereferenced to reach the dynamic address we actually care about. The number of total dereference hops depends on the static pointer. So let's try and approach this problem with a generic solution to make these potential unknowns easier to handle. Next, we just need to copy over the static pointer information we found earlier with Cheat Engine for both the map hack and the resource hack static pointers. And now we have all the information and structures that we need. The first new function we will put together here is get base address. Cheat Engine does a great job of helping us find the static pointers, but the starting base address can be a little less straightforward. We can think of the starting base address as just the location in memory where everything starts from. The starting base address 
is already the module's current address in memory. So in order to get the current base address, we can make use of the get module handle function and just pass in null as the parameter. Get module handle will then return the current running module, which is actually just the base address, which we are after. Age of Empires is such an old game that this function could just actually always return 0x40000 instead of calling any Windows APIs. Why is that? Well, because the implementation of address space layout randomization or ASLR didn't exist back in the 90s when this game was compiled. ASLR works by randomizing locations of different parts of the program in memory. That means that when the process is run, the location of the base address would change and it would change in such a way that we couldn't, or at least shouldn't, be able to predict it. For our trainer purposes, ASLR basically means that if we take a static pointer value and make a bad assumption on the location of the starting base address, our hack would fail because the starting base address would be wrong. And so every dereference memory hop that we make would also be wrong. We can see this randomization at work by making use of Process Explorer by SysInternals. If we start Age of Empires, we can see that the base address is set to the static and non-ASLR default 0x40000 value. But if we start an application which is compiled to make use of ASLR, such as Notepad, we can see that the base address is set to a different, unpredictable value. If we restart the machine, open both the applications again, and take another look in Process Explorer, we can see that as expected, Age of Empires still has the same predictable base address, but Notepad now has another new and randomized base address. If we had have hard-coded the Notepad base address, our pointer-based hack would now be broken. Most modern games will make use of ASLR, so using a hard-coded base address is never a good idea. Jumping back to the code, once we have our base address, we can start with our function to actually trace the static pointers. We start with our starting location, which is the starting base address and the initial offset value. Then for each additional offset, we update the location address by dereferencing the value and then adding our next offset. Once we have iterated over every offset, we return the current location. That location is the actual dynamic memory address we are after, which we have now found by tracing from the starting static pointer. Then we need a way to actually initialize our dynamic pointers, which we really only need to do once. Now that all our data is set up to find those dynamic memory locations we care about, we just need some functions to actually write to those locations and use the data we have found. First, we want a function to toggle our pointer version of the map hack on and off by toggling the dynamic pointer bytes. To enable the hack, we write a zero and a one in memory. And to disable the hack, we write a one and a zero instead. Lastly, we need a function to perform the actual boost to our food, wood, gold, and stone values every time the increase resources function is called. We take the current value already stored at each resource address, then increment that value by our resource boost and add an additional 1000 of each type of resource in the game. Basically, every time this function is called, we get an additional 1000 food, wood, stone, and gold. With the core functionality out of the way, we just need a way to trigger each of our hacks. So let's update our DLL's main thread. Pressing F6 will toggle the reveal map and no fog cheats using pointers. Pressing F7 will increase the player's resources and pressing F8 will toggle the reveal map and no fog cheats using our original binary patching approach. If we compile the trainer, start the Age of Empires game and inject into the game process, we can test our updated cheats out. As expected, pressing F6 will toggle the pointer map hacks, F7 will increase all our resources, and F8 will toggle the patch map hacks. Our updated trainer now has the ability to give infinite resources within the game 
and to also enable map hacks in two different but distinct ways. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. It really helps the channel grow if you comment, like, and subscribe below. Also, if you are interested in solving capture the flag challenges across a range of traditional Jeopardy based categories, including reverse engineering, make sure to check out 247ctf.com.